Do you love Victorian style? If so, then you're going to love this video because I'm going to make five Victorian themed crafts today. They're all easy, they're not all quick, but the last one is so quick if you blink you're going to miss it. Right, no time to stop and chat, let's get right over to starting some craft. For this project I'm going to take this old cigar box. Somebody has been using it to store the fish knives, forks and server. And I don't want it brown, I'm going to put some decoupage on this but before that I'm going to put a layer of black acrylic paint on. The Victorians often decoupaged on top of black paint so that's what I'm going to do. I've got this acrylic paint in lamp black and I'm just going to cover over the whole of this box. While that is drying, I've printed some decoupage images from the Graphics Fairy, put them all on one sheet, and now I'm going to cut them out so that we've got some things to stick onto our box. This is what they call fussy cutting, and it really is fussy to do. So pick images that are not too intricate if you're in a hurry, and if you really like a challenge, and more intricate the better. I picked one sort of midway, and then you just cut them out, doing as best a job you can to get all the edge shapes nice and crisp but if you end up having to chop off a few pointy bits then don't worry it's what I do and cut yourself out plenty of these because no matter how many you think you'll need you'll probably need more so there we go it's not the perfect fussy cutting but I'm happy with that and now I'm going to cut out even more Here's the box all painted. I didn't paint the inside because I want to keep some of this wood. The Victorians did love their dark wood, so I'm keeping that visible, but not all of it. So now I need to stick this little sign I made. The background is from the Graphics Fairy, and then I put my own word on uh, with the Mod Podge. And you'll probably need a little more than you expect if you're painting directly onto dry wood like this because it soaks in so much. Give it a good coating, but not so much that you're going to really wrinkle your paper up. And pop that in. Oh, that's already starting to look very Victorian. Now to tackle the outside of the box. As you can see, I've been fussy cutting like mad. It's taken me forever, but I've got all these to use now. So now take your decoupage pieces that you cut out make a start on covering your box. It's always better if you can cover the edges, the outsides first, just because it makes an easier job of things. And now you can see the advantage of painting black first because there are some spaces I don't want to cover this girl's hands in and it's the only way to avoid having the box showing unless it's painted black. Now it all merges in. Now with these ones that are hanging over the edge you have two options. You can cut them off but I like to drop them around the edges. Don't worry about making a bit of a mess with the Mod Podge because you will be putting a finer layer over everything so this works out well for me because you know me I'm a very messy crafter. I've got to worry you can just enjoy yourself. One final coat right over the top of everything, on the top too, so you know that everything's glued down firmly. And then I really recommend you open the box, because if you don't, you'll find you've glued it shut. While my Mod Podge is drying, I'm going to take this. This was in the bottom of the box and it was like a, a liner. Well, so that gives me the exact size of the bottom of the box. That little lip was just, you could lift it out, so we'll keep that square in and then cut it out with a craft knife. Now I'm going to use Maylene's tacky glue and because this is on the bottom, it's not going to fall anywhere. So you can just put a little bit all around the edges and a bit of a splurge in the middle and that should do it. Unless you want to be really efficient and glue every square centimetre, which is fine. And look at that, a perfect fit. And now to finish off, the reason I put this nice soft bottom is normally they would use velvet or something like that. I don't have velvet, so I think this foam is doing a good job. 
Now I just want to put some curios into my little box because the Victorians did love their little curios. So let's have a look what I've got. I painted this up as a blackbird's egg, but it was too deep for my box, so I dented the back. <laughs> Nobody's going to see when it's in there. So I think I'll put an egg in. I've had this gorgeous glass heart given to me by a friend, so I'm going to put that in there. Got this really interesting old piece of jewellery here that was found in a river. So that can go in there. What about this bit of very old pottery? Look at that, that's definitely got to go in. I'm going to put this rose quartz crystal in. And this part of an ammonite that I picked up on the south coast of the UK. And look at that for a box of curios. And it's pretty nice on the outside too. So I'm going to continue letting this dry and then we'll have a look what it looks like up on my display. craft I'm going to use this photo frame Ooh, there's my mister on again and I got one of these shadow box depth ones because I want something with a bit of depth and you'll see why in a minute I take the back off the frame and then take this off the back remove the mount and remove the glass we won't be needing that I'm going to remove the little legs from inside but not for the ones to hold the backboard on the easiest way I find to get these out is to grab it with your pliers and twist it and it sort of winds it out. Now at this point, if you want to, you can paint this or you can stain it. I'm going to try putting a little bit of dark stain on it and see if it works. Because it is varnished, it may not. So I'll add a little bit of dark wax antiquing stain. Because this is varnished, it hasn't taken the stain terribly well. But I'm happier with this than if I put on like a dry brush effect to make it look a little bit darker because I want it to look quite formal. I'm going to use my multi tool, which is actually my ruler, and scrape off some of this hot glue residue on the back. I'm going to cover the back with this. I think it's a gorgeous paper, but I need to stick it on with something and I'm going to use a Scotch glue stick. I'm going to match this along two edges and that means I've got less to cut. And then trim the edges. Now I'm going to use this Victorian antique boot that I found in the river when I was mudlarking. Now it's in a bit of a bad way, but I don't think that matters. When I first found it, all this was open, all this was open, so I've glued the bottom on and the back together with some hot glue. It's a bit messy, but I think I'll get away with it. It's such a lovely thing. I couldn't cover the front, it was too short. But I'm happy because it also gives that sense of age. But we do need a lace in it. I thought we'd put some lace, lace. So I've got this and I've got this flat needle that they call a bodkin. And I'm going to thread my lace through there. If you've just got a very thick needle or a darning needle, something like that, it'll probably do just as good a job. this with one of your children's shoes or something like that then you probably won't need this step where I put a piece of cardboard inside to try and give it some support because the poor thing is collapsing even though I've treated it with leather treatment it's still very stiff and it doesn't want to go in the proper shape a boot would be in if you see what I mean back out with our backboard back out with our frame and pop the backboard into place don't worry, I haven't gone completely bonkers. I do know that I haven't stuck anything on the backboard yet, but we're going to get there in a few seconds. And now I can see what I'm doing because I didn't know exactly where the edge was. And I think it's important to get this fairly central. So I'm going to be sticking the boot there. 
And in the top corner, I'm going to stick this picture of a pretty girl, Victorian girl, and I'm going to put it on this little dark wood piece of paper. And that'll look a bit like a Victorian frame. You can really see the difference now between a dark wood and the colour on my stain, but I'm happy enough. Stick it as straight and as central as I can manage, which as you know with me isn't very straight or central. Another change of plan. You know me and my change of plans. I've got this gorgeous antique lace. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. And I'm thinking of putting a run of that right down the centre there. I think I'll use some Aileen's tacky glue for this. This lace has got some stains on it, but I don't mind. I think that fits perfectly with the look of this picture. Trim off the edges and pop it back in. Oh yes, I think that's really going to help. So now I'm going to get my picture of this girl and I'm going to put it up in this corner here, but I want some of it on the lace. I'm going to use some hot glue for this. Now I'm going to get my shoe and glue it there. So we need to put glue where this is actually touching the frame on the back. So just check that out with your finger. And I know it's about this area. I'm probably going to put more glue than I need, just to be absolutely sure. Now I'm tempted to put a bit of lace around the boot. I know it's a bit late really, but we can manage that. We'll cut a nice straight edge. And then just to add a little bit of interest, I've got this bird, a little bit of hot glue. And then have the bird flying as if it's flying out of the boot. I like that. So I think I'm going to add a bow to the top there. I think that'll look gorgeous. If you're making one of these and you've got a child's shoe, then you could always put a little name plaque here. That would look lovely. Or even if you got, say, this was a shoe that you got of your great grandmother's, or you could put their name there, something like that. Let's have a look what this looks like up on my display. For this project, I'm going to be using this vintage lampshade. And the first thing I want to do is cover the bottom and I've already cut out the circle of foam board. That's because me and foam board don't get on. <laughs> so I thought I'll cut it off screen and that way then you won't have to watch me because it's really boring and slow. But one thing I did to measure around here was I put some a little bit of gold gildany paste on and then I stood it onto the board and it made, because as you can see I had a few failures using the pencil. So I cut it out using a craft knife and it's a much better circle than I normally get. Hot glue this piece of foam board to the top of the lampshade. I'm going to use this metallic gilding polish and this riser and I'm going to coat this with some gilding polish. I got this for 50p reduced in B&M bargains. It's always worth keeping your eye out all year round for those bargains. You don't necessarily have to go to a thrift store to get something that's a really good price. Now you can gild as much or as little as you like on here. I'm going to gild it quite heavily. So that's the look I'm going for. Almost completely covered, but with obvious bits that are not. The other options are completely gilded, don't gild it at all, or paint it. This will be the usual problem. I don't have the height to do this properly and show you because otherwise that's all you'll see. I'm going to put some hot glue all around the edge of the candlestick and then pop it on centrally. While that's drying, I'm going to show you my next stage. And I'm going to add this gorgeous tassel all around the bottom. I think that's going to look wonderful. Now that doesn't look very effective, but this is going to look so wonderful when you see it up on the display because you haven't seen it properly as I'm making it. So now I want to put something around here because I think that spoils the look of this a little bit, having that clear line with some gold on. I want to pop some lace on so I find the join on the bottom lace and keep all the joins in a row and that way then you can put them all at the back. As I put this lace on, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a stretch so that it goes around this curvy bit. 
otherwise it'll stick out and I don't think it'll look as nice. I'm going to put the frilly bits of this lace facing upwards and go around the bottom of the lamp just to make it look a little bit neater. Now I'm going to turn this round to the front and put a little bit of embellishment onto the front. And now with the last little flourish of extravagance, I'm going to glue that feather in there too. Well, I think that is looking fabulous already. So now I just need to pop a candle in it and take it up and have a look what it looks like on my display. project I'm going to use this ukulele. It looks like lovely condition. I bought this for a pound from the car boot sale but unfortunately it did have some issues. The keys won't keep the strings tight at all and it's got some marks and some dents so I've decided I'm going to convert it into a birdhouse. The first thing I need to do is sew off the neck to a much more manageable length. I did think about putting this up stood on the neck to give it the height but if you look it's all wrong because the bird hole needs to be at the top of the birdhouse not the bottom. So off with the neck. And I've got this far so you can see there the neck's been sewn off. It was terrible to sew off but I think it's because the grains were running in opposite directions. It was really hard work. I've drilled a hole here that I'm going to put a peg so the bird can sit on it. So I've got a few more things to do. I need to take this off. And as you can see, there's some laminate missing underneath. It didn't come off with the bit. They actually put it on with no laminate. So I'm just going to rub down with my sander the last little area that I haven't rubbed down yet. Well, that was a big job, but now we've got this and I've sanded it nice and smooth. I cut these two pieces for the roof. These are balsa wood and they're 20 centimetres long and they will eventually be going here. So now let's get the painting done to get started. The slowest part of any job, I'm going to use this chalky finish by Rustin's Paint in Kenwood Cream and I think it's going to take at least three coats to cover this. But I'm probably not going to cover this part because I think it just adds to the feature of it being a ukulele. You can't hide it, so embrace it. And I'm also going to paint the little stand that I'm going to glue for the bird to sit on in there. So to paint this, I'm going to be really lazy. So I've got this cotton reel. I'm going to dip it in the paint. Let all the paint run off. I am going to get a messy cotton reel, but this is one of my cheaper cottons, so I don't mind about messing the reel up. I wouldn't want to use one of my vintage wooden ones. And I'm going to pop it in there and put it on the side to dry. One word of warning when you're cutting the neck, be sure not to cut where there are metal strips because otherwise you will ruin your saw. Unless you've got one of these fancy dancy um, mitre saws that you can cut through the lot, in which case I would have done probably a bit of an angle on the top, but I didn't because my saw was really struggling. To paint the bird, I'm going to use this Morris Blue Chalky Emulsion. So that's the bird all painted. Now we'll put him to dry while we carry on with the next step. I've got these two 20 centimetre pieces of balsa wood and let's just check. They are seven and a half centimetres wide. So if you happen to be doing this with the same size ukulele, that's the size I've gone for. I'm going to take my ruler and turn these into planks. So I'll just put my ruler down along the edge. Run along with a pointy thing. And move it so that that line is straight against the ruler and down you go again. 
Now turn it around and do the same thing in the other direction. There, and then the same on the other piece. Out with my Rust-Oleum Furniture Finishing Wax in dark. Working it into the little grooves that I just made. Otherwise it'll skip those and they'll be light, which look a little bit odd. Finally, after a gazillion coats, this is dry. So I'm going to take my masking tape off. And now it's time to glue the roof pieces on. I attach the sides by using some hot glue where the sides touch the ukulele and also along the top. You can leave this open if you like. I want to put a backing on just the roof section. So place your birdhouse onto some balsa wood. I only have thin planks, so I'm going to have to do this in two parts. If you've got a nice big plank, you can do it in one. You have to be very careful at this point. If you don't wash your hands, you're going to get all bits of brown all over the rest of your birdhouse. So now lay your birdhouse back down. I'm going to put that side where it needs to go. And mark the other side. Cut it with your straight edge. More hot glue and glue it into place. So now I've got to put some decoration on this before I put the perch on. I've got some of these IKEA wall stickers. I picked these up from the charity shop for a pound. They came on big sheets, but I've cut them out into smaller pieces because that way then I can see where I want the layout to be. I think I'm happy with the layout I've come up with. So I cut the top off this and then peel the sticker off the back end. Now it's time to glue on our perch, which is dried nicely. I put a bit of hot glue on the back and a little bit of hot glue around the inside, trying not to get it everywhere. But you know me and hot glue, I am very messy. Poke it in, right through to the back. Aha! Now that's interesting, the paint wasn't quite dry. And it's all ruffled up like that, and I really like that effect. Plus, it hides a messy hot glue. If I could get that right every time, I think that's a really clever technique. Unfortunately, I think that was a one-off. This is a very country-looking birdhouse, so I think we need a raffia bow. And now it's time to put the feet on. If I put the same size feet on, it was tipping forward. So I've decided to go with two bigger feet at the front and one smaller one at the back. This way it slightly angles back a little bit, but I think that's better than tipping forward. So now it's just a case of hot gluing them on. Now you can, if you want to at this stage, put this on a leg. I think that because it's such a large size, it's going to be too big for most people's display areas. So I think this is plenty tall enough. Let's have a look. It is oh, about 14, 15 inches high, which I think is plenty for my room. I don't want anything any bigger. So now to tone my bird down a little bit and stop it chipping, I'm going to put some white wax on it. Before I glue the bird on, I'm going to put some of this into the around the opening there to make it look like there is a nest inside. Probably don't need that much. So there he is. Let's have a look what this looks like up on my display.
this last craft is perfect for setting the scene if you're going to do a bit of a Victorian display or if your house is Victorian themed, whatever the reason, I've got this. Sorry for the clattering. It's a small pot that would look like the sort of thing that the Victorians would keep their plants in and they loved greenery, aspidistra, any sort of ferns, things like that. So I've decided I'm just going to do a little fern display and it's so easy but really effective for setting the scene. Pop in a little bit of oasis. So now I've got myself a selection of fern picks. I'm going to start by putting them in the middle. With this fern, you don't want it facing front like a flower display. You want it to look like it was growing in the pot, which would be coming from a central crown in the middle and then splaying outwards. And now to add a bit more around the outside. And when these are growing, this will be coming out in this direction with the greenery on the top. So again, bear that in mind when you put in all your leaves in, if you want it to look natural. And because I want this to look really lush, I've gone into my third pick now. I don't want to be able to see any of the oasis in the inside and I want it to look like it's bursting out because it's so healthy. Yes, I think that looks completely lush and healthy. Look at that. You can just imagine that in a Victorian parlour. Let's have a look what this looks like up on my display. When was your favourite craft? Wow, I had such a lovely time making them. They are lots of fun and they're very time absorbing, but they're very relaxing too because of that. So if you've got some time to spare, then it's definitely worth trying these out. I think you're going to enjoy making them. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all next time. But until then, don't forget, have fun. Bye.